So two things before we read the gospel today. All of you kids out there, I need you to pay close attention. What is Jesus doing in our reading today, okay? And for all of us, I need to paint a picture for you. So Jesus has gathered all of his disciples together. They have had a meal. They are sitting around a table like this, right? They're sitting around a table. Jesus has been talking with them, and now he is going to pray for them. You are the disciples. You are sitting around this table. So the prayer that you are going to hear Jesus pray is a prayer for you. So keep that in mind as you're listening to the words of Jesus. Jesus looked toward heaven and prayed. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name that you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scriptures would be fulfilled. I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I invite the children to come on down. Good to see you guys. Are you enjoying this lovely weather? Yeah. And ready for school to be out? Yes. Yeah, I know you are. As you told me, are you ready for school to be done? Yeah, yeah. All right, so I gave you a task to do before I started reading the gospel. Oh, you want to go to sleep? You're tired? <laughs> Did the puppy keep you up all night? Mm -hmm. So I, he woke you up, yeah. So I gave you a task to do. As b before I read the gospel, asking you, what was Jesus up to? What was he doing? Did you guys figure out what he was doing? All right, let me read you the very first thing I said. See if you can figure out. Jesus looked toward heaven and prayed. What was Jesus doing? Praying, yeah. And before he prayed, what did he do? He he looked up to heaven, right? He looked up to heaven and he prayed. So what is prayer? Asking for forgiveness, yeah. What else? Asking for 
asking for God to protect us. Yes. So let's back up a second. When you guys are having trouble, who do you talk to? God and mom and dad. When you're happy, who do you talk to? Myself. Yourself? Okay. Okay, do you have like friends or something? Or cousins or family or something? You talk to me, yeah? How about you, Noah? Who do you talk to? Do you ever talk to your sister? Not if you can avoid it, huh? <laughs> How about your mom and dad? Yep. So you just talk to people, right? You tell them about your day. You tell them what's going on. Sometimes you tell them what you're afraid of, what you're happy about. Guess what? That's what prayer is. But prayer, we talk to who? God, yeah, we talk to God, we talk to Jesus. That's all prayer is. It's hanging out with God and telling him everything on our heart, everything that we're thinking about. That's all prayer is. And Jesus is praying for us today. How cool is that? Wow, yeah, that Jesus would pray for you and pray for me and pray for everybody here. That just blows my mind. I've never thought about Jesus praying for me before. I always think about praying to Jesus. And so Jesus prays to his father. We pray to his father. Now, I have asked my eldest granddaughter, Cadence, whose birthday it is today, by the way. She happens to be nine all right, to pray for us, to model for us prayer. So I have no idea what she's going to say, but she prays for us all the time. So she's going to use the microphone. Yeah. And so I want you kids all stand up. And we'll raise up our hands. You want me to hold this for you? You can hold it? Okay. And I'm going to put this right here. So everybody raise up your hands. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful day and this wonderful time that we have with you every day. We will always remember that you are our Lord, our Jesus, and you are our Christ, and you are our Savior. You have saved us through the toughest times. We will always remember that you are always with us and that we will have no doubt to talk to you whenever we have a hard time. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Cadence. Oh, I don't think the was the mic even on? It was. Okay, good. Some years ago, the family had gathered in the hospital. My wife's father was not doing particularly well. It was in September, and I had flown down from North Dakota. My wife was already here. Her sister happens to be with us today. The whole family was gathered there at the hospital because John Stewart was not doing well. None of us had any idea if he was going to live, if he was going to die, exactly what was going to happen. So a bunch of us were gathered around the bed, talking with dad. Some of us were in other corners of the room. I happened to be in the hallway talking to one of my brothers-in-law, actually Vicky's husband. And all of a sudden, we hear this voice, gather around for prayer. Everybody gather around for prayer. So we all came in from our various locations. We made a big circle. There was a lot of us, so probably two circles. We gathered tightly around dad's bed. Now, my assumption was that we were going to pray for dad. I mean, that seems like a pretty reasonable expectation, right? But you know what was really cool? Is dad prayed for us. Dad praised God. He thanked God for all the blessings in his life. He thanked God for the doctors and the nurses who had been caring for him. He thanked God for the family that was around him. And he prayed specifically for us. Well, come February of that year, of the next year, 
dad was welcomed into the loving arms of Jesus. And then June 15th of this past year, Jesus was standing right behind dad as dad welcomed his beloved wife home. Now, I think it's obvious why this story came to my mind as I was reading the gospel today and studying it. Because I'd never thought before about Jesus praying for us. Just like I never imagined dad or whomever it is in the hospital praying for the people who are gathered around them. It's usually the other way around. And so you'd expect the disciples to be praying for Jesus. I mean, think about everything that has happened just in the past few chapters in John. Jesus has gathered the disciples together to share a feast. He washes the disciples' feet before they celebrate this meal. He talks to them. He encourages them. He teaches them. He tells them, in my Father's house are many rooms. If that weren't so, I would have told you. I'm going to go and prepare a place for you, he says. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. He tells them, I'm the true vine, you're the branches. Stay attached to me. He says, I'm going to go and die, but I promise you I'm sending the Holy Spirit who's going to live inside you and walk beside you. He's giving them hope and comfort and encouragement. He's going to die. So what would you think you'd do? Like pray for the person who's getting ready to die maybe? Instead, Jesus prays for them. And if you remember from last week, Jesus calls them his friends. And Jesus says, you are his friends. In this prayer that we heard today, Jesus is praying for all of you. He's praying for me. He's praying for all of you who are watching today. This is an amazing gift did you hear what Jesus prayed for us about? I mean, Jesus begins by reminding everybody who's listening why he came. And why did Jesus come? To reveal God as God's one and only son. The only one who has seen God face to face, who's actually been in the presence of our heavenly father. He has come here to reveal that God to us so that we would know in our minds and our hearts and our beings who God is and God's great love for us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes him will not perish but have eternal life. Now at the beginning of the prayer, which we didn't read this morning, Jesus reveals to us what that eternal life means. Now, for most of us, eternal life means, well, living forever, right? But what Jesus reveals is eternal life is knowing God the Father and knowing Jesus, his Son. Now, knowing I've talked about this before. Hopefully many of you remember this. Knowing does not mean to collect intellectual information, right? It's not about um, memorizing something or knowing the creed or knowing information about God. It's actually knowing God, knowing Jesus as being in a relationship with him, being in fellowship with him, hanging out with him, just like you are in fellowship with one another. It's being with God. It's being with Jesus. And that's why Jesus came, to give us this gift of eternal life. And then Jesus says, and this is what I've done, Father. All the words that you've given to me, I have given them to my disciples. And my disciples have believed them. They have trusted your words that I have given to them. Now, can you imagine as the disciples who are gathered in this room to hear Jesus praising them to their his heavenly father telling his father about how amazing and wonderful these disciples are that god has given him now i don't know about you but it sure seems to me these days we spend a lot of time tearing each other down doesn't it 
whether it's on television, whether it is on Facebook and other social media, whether it's in person, we tear people down. We criticize them. Nothing ever seems to be good enough. Well, what if we took Jesus' approach here? What if we lifted one another up? What if we praised each other for the ways that we're following Jesus, for the ways that we're being faithful to God? What an incredible way to encourage one another, to lift one another up. And then Jesus says this, I'm not praying for the world. He says, I am praying for those you have given me. In other words, you and the rest of the disciples. It's not obviously that Jesus doesn't care about the world because God so loved the world, right? And the world is the good, the bad, the ugly, the evil, everything in all of creation. It's that Jesus is just focusing right now on you. I want you to hear those words. Jesus is praying right now for you. That's the gift he's given you today. And he says, I'm not going to stay here any longer. So, Father, I'm entrusting them, all of you, into your hands. And he asks his heavenly Father, first of all, to protect them. Protect them from the evil one. Now, shortly after this, Jesus is going to go into the garden where he's going to be arrested and you may remember that when he appears in the garden and the soldiers are there, that Jesus says to them, I am, meaning he is God. He is present there. And he says, you may not harm my disciples. I will go with you. What did Jesus just do? He protected them. And then Jesus is saying, but Father, I want you to protect them from all evil. He reminds us of Judas. Satan comes into Judas. Judas betrays Jesus. And Jesus is praying, Father, protect all of those whom we love so that evil will not come into them. Then the next thing that Jesus says is, I pray, Father, that you will sanctify them. Yeah, yeah sanctify them. So what does sanctify means? It's one of those big words, right? It means to be made holy. What does it mean to be made holy? To be holy does not need, mean to be sinless or perfect. To be holy means that our Heavenly Father sets us apart, sets us aside for a special task. You have all been made holy because God has made you holy. God has set you aside, set you apart, because he has a special task for you. Now, when did he set you apart and make you holy? Well, there's two ways that God does that. He does it, Jesus says, because you listen to his word, and God's word is truth. So when you listen, when we read scripture, when we sing hymns, when we listen to what God says and what Jesus said, we are being made holy by his word. But we're also made holy when we're baptized. Because what happens when we're baptized? God the Father, he pours water over us. We are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our sins are washed away. We are made pure and holy. And then Jesus says, they have a task. Father, just as you sent me to go out into this world the good, the bad, the ugly, the evil, and everything in between. Now I am sending you, my disciples, out into the world to proclaim this good word that Jesus has given us. That you get to be Jesus in the world. You get to point to God. You get to tell the people about who Jesus is and why Jesus came. You get to tell them about our Heavenly Father who loves us more than we can imagine. You get to tell them that they are forgiven and that they are loved and nothing, nothing in all of creation will separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ. How awesome is that? 
Now for me, the part that stands out the most is the prayer. This Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our King, our best friend, who prays for us. What does prayer look like for you? I mean, here you hear Jesus praying for you, how he praises God for who you are and what you've done. He asks his heavenly Father to protect you from evil, to make you holy, so that you can go about as you're sent into the world to proclaim the good news. But what does prayer really mean for you? And what does it look like when you pray? What if we use this as kind of a model for prayer? That we lift one another up. That we pray for God's protection from evil for one another. That we'd be made holy as we are sent out into the world. And what if we didn't just pray it in our heads? What if we prayed it out loud? Where somebody might hear. I mean, if I think about dad praying for us. It wasn't that he prayed in his head. He spoke the words out loud and they became real and powerful and meaningful. For the disciples who are gathered around this table listening to Jesus pray for them, you think they had the same experience? That these were powerful and real. So what if when somebody says to you, you know, I'm going through this difficult time, would you pray for me? or I've got a surgery that's coming up, would you pray for me? Instead of just saying, yeah, what if you prayed right then and there? Not in your head, but out loud, where that person who has asked you for prayer can hear. Or what if they don't even ask you for prayer, but they just tell you what's going on in your life and you offered to pray for them right then and there? I mean, I've prayed for people at gas stations and grocery stores in the middle of the street and on the street corner. I've prayed in hospitals. You name it, I've probably said a prayer over somebody there. So why can't we all do that? Why can't we give this gift to one another that Jesus has given to us and not worry about whether the words are right, whether they make sense or not, because we pray with groans that words cannot express, the Apostle Paul tells us, right? God knows. The point is that we will be transformed and the person we're praying for is being transformed because they are hearing your words. Now, Pastor Rich Melheim tells this wonderful story about geese. So when geese fly, how do they fly? They fly in a V-shaped flock, right? Well, the interesting thing about the geese is that the geese actually fly behind and slightly above one another. You can't tell that when you're looking up in the sky, right? It just looks like this V-shape. But so there's one in the front, and then the next two are just slightly above the one in the front, and it just works its way on back, okay? And why do they do that? Because the goose in front creates an updraft underneath the geese behind, which makes it easier for them to fly. And if you have a flock of 25 geese, they can fly 70% further than if they're flying all by themselves. You're getting the point, right? And what happens is the goose in front, that's the hardest position, so after a little while, that goose moves into the center because that's the easiest place. And the back is also the next most difficult. And so they rotate to the middle. So the geese are constantly doing this rotation from front to back to middle to side as they lift one another up by that updraft. So Rich suggests, what if we think of prayer that way? In other words, as we're praying out loud for one another, we're creating that updraft and lifting one another up. The only thing that I would say is I don't think the head goose ever changes. I think the head goose is Jesus, right? He's the boss. He's the one who's leading us. And I think the wind is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who lifts us up and moves us 
forward as we are sent out into the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And so like Jesus, I pray to God. Actually, let's just pray right now. And if you remember, Jesus lifted up his hands. So just like we did with the kids, we're going to lift our hands. And I encourage you, don't look down. Don't look forward. Look up, just like Jesus did. Dear Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, who has revealed you to us. And thank you for the gift of faith that you've given to us. And Father, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters here who have heard your word, who have trusted your word, who believe and trust that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. And Father, you know all of their worries, all of their concerns, their fears, their stresses, their hopes, their joys. And so, Father, I entrust them into your good and faithful hands. Protect them from the evil one and make them holy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.